Pastor Joe here. Glad to see you today. Glad you joined. Take a little time. Give me about six or seven minutes of your time today. I want to talk about some things that I think will be uh, help us to understand that the, the uh, uh, where we are with this mass mandate and where we are with our church. So I want you to, to make hopefully clarify that. Cheap commercial break right quick. Join us Easter. If you're a guest at Believer's Fellowship, you'll get one of these beautiful Believer's Fellowship mugs to, to take home with you. We will make those same mugs available after Easter to church members who would like a set or some or one or whatever to get. And they're really pretty. They're beautiful with our church logo on them. But commercial break is over. Back to business. Let's talk about the mask mandate. The governor has lifted as of tomorrow uh, the mandate on wearing masks in the state of Texas, although at the same time he's recommended that people wear masks. Uh, businesses are taking their own position. Churches are taking their own position. You know, I spoke about this uh, a year ago about where we would be in the future on this. And, I, you know, whether it's prophetic or whatever, I shared back then that one of the biggest issues coming up and it's going to be the biggest pressure issues would be this issue about mask wearing. And that ultimately this thing would be used by politicians, by the media and by others to drive a wedge. We're living in a very divisive age and a divisive culture in our country. And it seems that anything that they can do to shame people over the one side or the other side or humiliate someone over it, they find a reason to do it. And certainly mask has become one of those things. We can not be, as children of God, uh, those kind of people step back and seek to shame others, guilt others into doing or not doing what our personal preferences are. I'm personally glad that the, that the governor has backed off the mandate and put it back in the hands of people to be responsible for what they will do or they won't do. From the very beginning, Believer's Fellowship has never mandated mask. We've always highly recommended mask. Our staff will wear mask if, if they're approached by people in masks. If we have to run around and do so many things, we can't wear them all the time. We are we exhaust ourselves, can't breathe. But we do practice and we do re show respect to those who are wearing masks. So we wear our mask when we're communicating with people with mask on in the services. The counseling inv invitation times, we wear masks during those times. If someone approaches us with a mask, we're always sure to wear a mask. Sometimes we wear it when they don't have a mask. But our, our goal and objective is to show love in all things and be respectful to people. And I think that's the most important part. We know that the science is not in on this. No matter how both sides of the aisle will claim, look at the science, look at the science. I don't think we're going to know the science on it. The data is not going to be in on it for another year or two. We're going to see a lot of mistakes. We're going to see a lot of folly. We may see some truths. We may see some failures of things we should have done we didn't do. Uh, that's a whole nother story. You know, when it all came out about the mask, we were told, don't wear a mask. Dr. Fauci, others came on. The media, the media came on and they began to show us uh, pictures of how the, you know, the molecules, virus molecules can get through the mask with no problem and that uh, only N95 mask would work. And then they showed how those have to be changed several times a day because they become uh, full of bacteria. And then we were told, oh, that was wrong. We'd need to wear a mask. And, and then we were told, you know, to wear two masks. And in the beginning, we were told that the virus would spread by touch. We came in, we fogged our churches with sanitizers at both campuses. We did our social distancing. We put our mask on all the people in, in places of meeting and greeting. And then we were told, oh, well, you don't need to, to, to spray down like that. Just, you know, keep things clean. And uh, But you don't have to fog every service because this virus is not spread through touching. So again... You know, the evidence has always been sketchy. Uh, the majority of people who seem to uh, have had COVID or people who wore masks. I know some folks who said, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I wore masks and gloves when I did go out and I still got COVID. So there you have it. Uh, it, it it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, there, there's uh, some statistics I'll share with you just in, in a moment. But but now as a church, what we will do is pretty much what we have always done. Most of you know we didn't mandate the mask. We always highly recommended to wear a mask. Our ushers, our greeters would wear masks as people are approaching with mask on. Pastors in meetings would wear masks if they're not preaching or teaching. But if they're speaking individuals, they would be certain to put mask on when others had mask on. I'm not a big mask fan. I don't. I carry a mask. I show respect by wearing my mask when because I, I want to reach other people and I want to minister to other people, and that's my first priority. But I, you say, why don't you wear a mask? One, because I still don't believe that the science is in that protects anybody from anything and keeps you from getting it or spreading it. That's just not there. And the doctors that I know personally, I've talked to, pretty much agree with that. But it's a decision that I made personally, and I feel I'm responsible from for my decisions. Another reason I don't wear a mask, except when I have to wear a mask in places of business and such as that, 
because I have a very good immune system. I was, we were talking in the staff there that people are in the hospital, been in the hospital about how many times you've been in the hospital. I said, I've been in the hospital one time, I think when I was five or six years old. Uh, I have a very good, strong, I'm a healthy, praise the Lord for that. I don't take it that lightly. I'm a very healthy individual for the most part. I am getting older, so I, I am responsible to watch out what I do and what where I go and, and how I handle myself. But uh, personally, I even think I had COVID already back when it was started. They first announced it was in the United States. It was in January or February. They said it was in December of 2019. Uh, Kathy and I were both sick in January of 2019. Doctors couldn't figure out what it was. And now in hindsight, they pretty much said you, you most likely had COVID. But here, mostly why I don't wear a mask all the time and all the other places if I don't have to wear a mask is because I do believe in personal responsibility. And I do believe in personal freedoms. And I think that's important. I do not look to the state of Texas. I do not look to the government. I do not look to the CDC. You know, I, I realize I will look at all these things. I will hear what people are saying, but I will make responsible decisions. I, am, I think that uh, I have an intelligence level, and most of you do as well, to make good, smart, reliable decisions to take care of yourself and to watch out and be respectful to others at the same time. So I'm not telling you to wear a mask or not wear a mask. I'm telling you to be personally responsible. Some of you have compromised immune systems. You should be cautious. You should wear a mask. You should take the necessary steps and procedures that you can take to protect yourself and to look out for your own health. You should be taking supplements. I take vitamins. I take supplements. I, again, I try to take keep myself in good, healthy condition. But I do not think we, you know, that uh, that uh, that uh, it's the responsibility of society or culture or government or federal government or state government or county government or county judges to tell me how to live my life. I will obey the laws as a citizen of this country. The, there's no law on masks. All right, there's some mandates out there, and uh, people can put you other personal businesses. So I'll, I'll respond accordingly in each one of those decisions. But I'll make responsible decision. I will wear a mask when and where it helps me to help others, all right? I don't put myself first in this. I want to put people first in this, and I want to put the Lord first in this. I will practice social distancing, and I do, uh, because the science does exist on social distancing, that that does work, that you can be in groups and still practice social distancing. The CDC guidelines a few years ago were just four feet. When the pandemic hit, it became six feet just to ensure that social distancing would take place because most people usually drift within four feet anyway. Uh, I will continue with, to lead our church to practice these guidelines with our seating and especially through Easter will be set up with safe distancing guidelines. But I want to say this, as you think about returning to church, and this is for those who might not have come back yet, as the state said, uh, as I, I've stated before, and I've said before that we have no have had no outbreaks of COVID at either of our campus that can be traced back to beginning at COVID or being the I mean to beginning at the church that we haven't come to the place where the church is a is a place where we are spreaders. Nothing's been traced back to that. Nothing's been evidenced by that because I do believe we've been very good about doing what needs to be done: sanitary stations, sanitizing stations, uh, uh, social distancing. Uh, a ventilation that draws the, the vaccine up and away from everyone at our campuses. So those things are in place. But think about this. There's 29 million people in Texas. Over 10% of those people have had COVID already that we know of. There's probably another 10% that never reported it, just kind of went through and just didn't deal with it, didn't go get tested, just had it and got over it. There's another 2.7 million that have had it, 10% as I said. There's 7 million people now to date that have been vaccinated. That number will grow rapidly. There'll be 14 million more by the end of the week. Uh, I mean, they're vaccinating it right now and it will increase in the days ahead. 2 million people a day in the state of Texas. Uh, there are three vaccines that are available. So those numbers are going to continue to grow. Uh, the herd immunity begins to set in soon at some particular point in time. The most vulnerable, praise the Lord, are being vaccinated first. So that's the most important thing, that we do protect those. And you, again, be responsible if you're a vulnerable person. The bottom line, and maybe you're getting tired of listening to this. Let me just wrap it up. The bottom line is be responsible. The bottom line is don't believe that science is in on the disease yet because it's still been, it's not. Don't live in fear. Don't let the media scare you. Don't let people scare you. Don't let the never maskers, no maskers, always maskers determine your, your decisions. 
Be wise, be discerning, talk to the Lord about this. Be obedient to God. And by that, I mean, for the, if you're still out of church, again, have your plan ready to get back into church because that is the will of God, all right? So get your, whether it's your vac getting your, both your vaccines done or, you know, uh, wearing your mask, get, get back as soon as possible. And you get the freedom to do that from the Lord. You do that, all right? But two last things. Respect other people, all right? Just respect folks. And don't be judgmental. Respect folks. And most important of all, choose to love each other. I love you. Your church loves you. I know you love us and you love the church. So let's get back to church ASAP. And look to Easter, though, for those of you who've been out, because by then you should have had those vaccines and, and done taken the necessary steps. We are still practicing those guidelines at church of safe distancing, the aisle seating, uh, sanitation stations, and all that's going on. So I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Have a glorious week in Jesus Christ. Amen.